Serena from Lodestar, and I'll continue our user group with getting the lyrics right in TM1. Just like you mangle the words to songs when singing in the car, you can do that in your code syntax or TM1 just doesn't get what you mean. Some of these examples you may have encountered, some you have not, and some that you may encounter in the future. I'm hoping to save you some time and prevent you from banging your head on the desk when you start muttering to yourself, why won't you listen? Example 1 is the use of the TI function called Dimension Element Principal Name. This function is only valid in Turbo Integrator. This function returns the principal name of an element or element alias. Turbo Integrator must use principal element names when updating dimensions. Element aliases cannot be used. Therefore, this function is for determining principal element names while attempting to update a dimension when only element aliases are available to the TI process. TI processes can still load data based on an alias of an element. However, I have been running into TM1 just not listening to the alias. If your data source only has the element alias provided, simply create a new variable off the alias and use this function to derive the principal element name to use instead. Let's review how this works. In the TI process that I've started, I show a text file being used and the source data has the period number instead of the three character month name as you can see in the column for period. We go to the variables tab and modify the settings of the variables derived as needed. We have set the variable period to other and now we click the new variable button to create a variable that will derive the element name using our TI function. We click new variable and you see in row six we have the V6 numeric ignore formula and we just modify the variable name so it's more distinctive and we call it V period. We change it to string for the variable type because all elements need to be string and then we click the formula button to use our dimension element principal name function. Here we show the V period variable is equal to our formula which is the dimension element principal name and then in the brackets we put the name of the dimension, which is months, and that needs to be put in single quotes, followed by a comma, and then period, which is the variable on our variables tab that we're deriving the element name from. After we put that formula in, we click the evaluate button and we see that Jan is being derived from the alias of one. Now you may already have processes that are working fine without needing to use this function, but again, lately I have been running into this issue of TM1 not wanting to listen to the alias provided. So if you run into problems loading data and you think you have everything melts mapped and coded correctly, this could be what is giving you the headache. Just a thought to keep in the back of your head, and if ever you need to recall the syntax for this, just kind of remember and Google it, dimension element principal name, and it'll pull up the IBM user guide documentation to assist you with this. My next example is scripting to include in a TI process where your data source contains both numeric and string data in the same data column. We see in our data source tab that we have string data that is highlighted in yellow and numeric data that is highlighted in green and both those types of data are in the data column that we see in our preview pane. We go to the variables tab to set our variables and we only get an either or choice of numeric or string for our data variable. So we'll go ahead and leave it as numeric. You complete your mapping of variables to dimensions and choose your cube to update and then hit the run button. Our process completes and runs with minor errors. We check the error log and see that it cannot update the string cells because our data is numeric as we selected in our variable type. So we go back to our variables tab and change our data variable from numeric to string, do our advanced dance and run through our process again. And for those that aren't familiar with advanced dance term, that's going to the advanced tab, clicking on each tab, the parameters, prolog, metadata, data, and epilog in order for the generated code to update. Running our process, again we get minor errors because this time we are trying to hit numeric cells with string data. To alleviate this, we will change the contents to other for our data variable in the variables tab. And then we add this coding to the data tab that you see in yellow which will allow us to process both the string and numeric data at the same time. Let's break down this code to explain how and why it works. In the first line of code, we are declaring the variable that is called VL type, and we are equating that to the result of the dtype function being used on the V measure element from the M 
headcount dimension. dtype is a TM1 rules function valid in both TM1 rules and TI processes. dtype returns information about the element type of a specified element. It returns n if the element is a numeric element, s if the element is a string element, and c if the element is a consolidated element. This first line of code may instead be done in the variables tab if you prefer. So to create that first line of code in the variables tab, we go back to the variables tab, hit the new variable button, and create the VL type variable using what we show in the yellow highlights. Then we hit the formula button and type the same coding we had originally in the data tab. Click evaluate and you can see your result in the sample value area where it's deriving S for string. The nice thing when declaring variables this way is that you can see that your coding is coming up with the correct result right then and there. When we go back to the data tab, we can see that if we declare the VL type variable in the variables tab, TM1 will automatically generate this code in between the begin and end generated statements area at the top, as opposed to typing it freely beneath the generated statements area where we did it originally. The next few lines of code make up an if-else statement. The syntax in a TI process is a little different than the syntax used in an if-then rule. Whereas rules use commas in between arguments, a TI process requires semicolons. First we ask if the result of the dtype function is that the variable VL type equals n, meaning a numeric element. If that element is true, we are using the cell put n function to update the cell's intersection with the numeric data that we get from using the number function to convert our string data to numeric. Remember we had chosen in our variables tab to treat the data variable as string and therefore we need to convert it to numeric to load to numeric cells. In the middle of the two arguments we use the else function. Then we use the cell put s function to populate the cell's intersections that receive the string data. Finally, we end our code with the end if command. We hit the run button and voila, process completes successfully. Now we'll move on to the de no function. The de no function in TM1 can be used for both TI processes and rules. Looking at the user guide documentation you see here, this function seems pretty straightforward, just requiring the specific formatting of either the four digit year, two digit month, and two digit day, or the two digit year, two digit month, and two digit day. This function is helpful for situations where you'd like to do math based on dates. In our example, we are using a start date and an end date to calculate the duration of each project. I have already built the cube that will house this data. In our example, I have created a TI process to load our data to the cube using a text file as a source. On a side note, when you're using an ODBC connection as a source, you may need to change the data format by creating a variable off the date provided depending on whether the source is passing the data as numeric, since TM1 would need to load the date as string. Our source file doesn't include the year that we are loading data to, so I created a user variable that uses a formula to derive the year to load the data to based on the start date provided in the file. Note that I have chosen data from the destination section of the variable formula dialog box. I did this to shorten processing time. The destination default is both and will automatically generate the TI code for this formula on both the metadata tab and the data tab. If I needed this process to update object structure, I would need it to go to the metadata tab. However, in this case, I only am loading data and not making any structure changes so I only need the code to generate in the data tab. Remember, a TI process will read each data record as it goes through the code of the metadata tab and the data tab. So if you don't need it to do all that processing, narrow it down to the necessary tab. This is especially true when your source data set is very large. Next, we create another variable to use our deno function to calculate the project duration time. This looks very much like the way the example is in the user guide though we make it a nested if statement for our business logic needs. Moving on to the maps tab, we choose the cube we want to load our data to and then map our dimensions. In the prologue of the advanced tab, 
we have standard coding for zeroing out our target view. The data tab has the code that was automatically generated from our selections made in the variables tab. Notice that the formulas from the variables we created appear in this section between the begin and end generated statements area. Now we hit run and open our cube to see the results. And our cube has been populated with the applicable start and end dates and duration column is populated with the result of the Dano formula we used in the TI process. So that is how Dano works in a TI process. Moving on to the Dano function in a cube rule, we will repurpose our project duration cube and this time we will use rules to calculate the duration of each project. I've already written the rules to calculate duration four different ways so that you can see how TM1 interprets what you code. I've written the first rule the way the user guide insinuates. Again, looking at the user guide documentation, it would appear that we would write the code this way. We save the rule, recalc our cube, and when we recalc the cube, we see that our duration column is populated with NAs. Does anyone know why this error is occurring? The reason for this is that TM1 stores dates as string, which is why when you look at the elements for start and end date, they have the string property. Because the date is string data, you have to use the DB function for your rule. You cannot simply use the elements like the user guide shows. Going back to our rule, I'll comment out the first version and uncomment the second version that uses the DB function. Now when we recalc our cube, we do get the duration to calculate. However, when there is no end date populated, we are still getting NAs for our duration. So we'll add a little more fine tuning to our rule to get rid of the NA result. In the third version, we add an if then statement to populate the duration as zero if there's no end date, else calculate the difference between the end date and the start date. Okay, the NAs are now gone. Fabulous, but wait, there is more. What happens when a project begins and ends in the same day? As the rule is now, it would populate a zero, but we really want the result to show as one day. So to add our business logic where the start date equals the end date, we want a duration of one, we add into the rule a nested if-then statement that when the end date is blank, set the duration as zero. If the end date equals the start date, then the duration is one. Else calculate the difference between the end date and the start date. So now for project number two, when the end date equals the start date, the duration is one. Continuing with dates in TM1, many TM1 users also use perspectives to populate cube data. I had a client recently that couldn't get dates to load from a web sheet into his TM1 cube. To illustrate the difference between how TM1 calculates dates and how Excel handles dates, I'm going to work with our existing cube again. Here I have a perspectives file that I am using to send data to our TM1 cube. The formulas in yellow are using the DBS function to send the dates populated on the left to the database. We hit recalculate to send the data to the cube, but when we look at the cube through Server Explorer, we see that nothing populated for projects one through five. Does anyone know why? For those of you that said you need to use the DBSS function, you are 99% correct. TM1 holds dates as string data, and therefore, to send string data, you have to use the DBSS function. Here we see project number six is using the DBSS function, but it's still not populating the dates to the cube. Does anyone know why this is happening? Well, this is the 1% of the formula that was missing. Excel will treat dates as numeric data. However, TM1 treats dates as string data. In order to get Excel to speak to TM1, 
we need to convert the date from the left to string using the Excel text function, which can be seen in project number seven. So once we add the text around the field that we're deriving the date from, and then use the DBSS function to send the data, we are now able to populate our dates into our cube and our rule will then take over and do our duration. Any questions or comments?